Hey all, welcome back to another wildlife adventure. Have you ever visited the Land of Enchantment, New Mexico? If not, I strongly recommend that you do so. It's a place full of beauty in so many different forms. Our trip here started off with a drive actually down through the central valleys of Colorado, uh, taking in some of the scenic views going from mountains that range up to 14,000 feet, sweeping down south through the San Juan Valley where things transition from high meadows and forests to Chihuahuan, almost Chihuahuan desert-like habitat uh, with scrub and grassland and choya cactus starting to pop up and that ever so familiar plateau landscape that New Mexico is rather famous for. My hopes were to find many unique species that the state is home to and while weather kind of threw a wrench in a few of those plans, there are still plenty of things on the horizon. Alright, we are down at our first stop in Santa Fe with uh, Nathan and Bryce and hopefully we'll find some good things down near the uh, creek in the arroyo down here. Through here, beware the pollen. <laughs> oh, I don't think I missed it. Apparently, you two have not met each other. No, she also doesn't know who you are, so clearly, I am in the wrong. I've so got him. The two of you are just not memorable people. Now, I've got him. Look at that. This, unfortunately, was the only photo that we managed to get of this guy because, well, I'm a klutz and when these guys decide to spasm when you're not expecting it, it's really easy for them to jump out of your hands and run away. Luckily, it's not the only one that we found, but we'll get to that in a second. These are uh, southern uh, plateau lizards, and depending on who you talk to, these are either a subspecies of the eastern pheasant, fence lizard, Scoloporus undulatus, or a species all of their own, Scoloporus uh, tristitious. All right, so we lost the first one, but we've managed to catch a second one here. This is a uh, southern plateau lizard, one of the subspecies of the eastern fence lizard. Uh, there's a number of different subspecies that live out across uh, most of the U.S. actually, and this is one of the ones that comes right through here in uh, Santa Fe and then sweeps westward. So. This is not quite an adult, and there he goes. Not a terrible thing that he's gone though, because we got our video. But there's quite a few that live out here, and they're one of the main food sources of uh, the stuff that we really hope to find. So here's hoping those guys are out and about somewhere. A few photos were managed of this second lizard, which is also actually a female. Uh, these are animals that are active most often in the heat of the day, uh, during uh, spring, summer, and fall. They tend to be a little bit less active, a little bit less visible during winter. Uh, they like to eat any small insects that they can find around each other. And as you'll see later on in the video here, actually, the males and the females are pretty distinct from each other in coloration and pattern. Another, oh. these plateau lizards right here. He's a big one. Uh-huh, see if we can catch him. Right here. Don't move. Hold on. Damn it. Okay. In addition to wildlife, the area is just starting to experience the first of its monsoon rains, which is starting to bring uh, different flowers out into view, including these, I'm not sure if they're wild peas or not, but beautiful nonetheless. Hello, you two. And for a good 10 minutes or so, we had a flock of these guys following us up the wash. Uh, American crows and their relatives, the two raven species, which also became a lot more common as we headed south, uh, are extremely intelligent birds and they like to watch things that are going around in their environment. 
And especially, they will follow uh, anyone that they think is being particularly curious, perhaps hoping that we would scare up some food, or just simply trying to figure out what it was that we were doing. other side then. Well they'll just keep going around the corners. So this is a male that's a female. Oh I see them now. See there they go. No they haven't gone yet. I'll get some video if you can of them if you can see them both. Here we actually had a male seen here which we were trying to capture uh, doing some territorial bobbing behavior didn't quite pan out, as well as a female that was on the same tree that I'm sure he was trying to court. All right, so we've got a male uh, plateau lizard here, and you can see this is clearly a male because he's got the swollen uh, bulge at the end base of his tail here where the hemipenes are stored, and males develop these brilliant blue display colors that they use to show off to females and also display to other males saying that, hey, I am strong, I am healthy, and you don't want to mess with me. This is my territory. So they will bob and show that off to scare off other males. And also display, of course, to the females the same thing. I am strong, I am healthy, you want to mate with me. So there was a female at the base. Actually, she's still on the base of the tree, mm -hmm. so we might try catching her in a second, too, just for comparison, although earlier we already got some photos of other females. But this is a great example of that brilliant blue on the just want to move away and drink now. Him. keep holding him no if you want to try just grip the leg or the whole body and he will squirm so here you want your hook yeah i'll see if i can hi okay so you focus on this So while I was busy trying to capture the female, Bryce got to hold the male and a couple more chances to show off that incredible blue color. Blue as a pigment is rare in animals, so this is not actually a pigment, rather this is a structure within the actual skin of the animal, within the scales, that causes light to reflect differently so that it looks blue, but it's not actually colored in that manner. You'll notice the male also has a very different pattern compared to the female here, which we'll be able to show against each other very shortly. All right, so we've finally got, we've got the male and the female right next to each other. You can see the male's got the kind of the stripes down his back, while the female's got these sort of chevron patterns. And then if you look on the belly, the female's got a little bit of blue, but it's nothing compared to what the male shows off. And you can also see the difference in the base of the tails. Uh, we showed earlier he's got that swollen part of the tail. She's got this skinny section of her tail because all of her uh, reproductive organs are internal where she develops the eggs. And this might actually be... She probably actually laid her first set of eggs uh, not too long ago. Yes, I can feel you trying to get away. Hold on. You're urating on me. So they don't produce urine per se. They actually excrete uric acid uh, as kind of this white powdery mess. So that helps them retain water around here so that they can survive better in dry environments. And of course you can see both of these guys, <laughs> hello, are perfectly uh, adapted to blend into desert environments or any rocky, leafy area too, because they will just disappear. You can see something's gotten his tail recently because he's Oh yeah, he's growing it. it back. Whereas she has a perfect tail still. Nothing's gotten her before in that manner. So like a lot of other lizards, these guys will break off their tails fairly easily and it'll continue to twitch and wiggle around to distract the predator while the lizard gets away. 
a great look at this pair of lizards, certainly. Although it's important to keep in mind that these species and all their relatives are often quite variable, so this uh, distinction between males and females can often kind of break down in different areas or across different species. So a lot of the more reliable traits may be sh different shapes in uh, scale structure telling the species apart, or that brilliant blue coloration underneath the belly for a lot of the uh, Scoloporus species, as well as, of course, if you see that thick base of the tail, you've probably got a male. Good. Ready? All right. Here you go, and she goes down that way, and he goes up around the corner. She's still hanging out. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you be. This here was actually really interesting behavior that we saw. That is not the goldfinch's nest. Rather, she is stealing material from that nest to go build her own. Can you see it feeding babies? Shh. Wait. Oh, it's stealing something from the nest there. Yep. We're taking video of it. I got it clear enough in the video. Shortly after we uh, relocated to a different location to hopefully have a little better luck. And unfortunately snakes and such still continue to elude us. We did find some massive tree choyas that were beginning to bloom. These things have some incredibly hot pink flowers. And of course off in the distance the first signs of the storms that would come to plague us all week long. Which will also later on bring even more of these guys into flower. Oops. <laughs> Rainstorm in the desert. Hopefully this evening we can get over there and cruise because that's where stuff will be really active. Down in the desert, herping is often all about can you get the timing just right? Because showing up before the monsoons begin often result in really poor findings. Showing up during the monsoons when you're just getting hit by a storm can also be rather really poor, particularly for reptiles, since they don't like to be out when it's pouring rain. And unfortunately, we ended up being here a lot when it was during the pouring rain. Now that's good for amphibians, as we'll see in some later videos, but can sometimes make it a little tricky for finding snakes and lizards. Despite being everywhere, not exactly the easiest bird to get video or photos of. Uh, these guys are supposed to be moderately common up where I live too, but I never see them, so it was actually kind of a treat to see them all over the place while we were down here. <laughs> a bit of a rainstorm, the little creek is filled up down here. The next day, all our plans kind of went out the window. We'd hoped to visit the uh, Val Caldera area in the Yemas Mountains to look for the endangered endemic Yemas salamander, but unfortunately, thanks to wildfires, almost the entire uh, forests in New Mexico were closed. So we moved elsewhere. Hello, Bryce. So after a uh, slow first couple of days, we're taking a breather from looking in the wild, and we are visiting the uh, Rattlesnake Museum. So we're going to head inside, check things out. 
Located in Old Town, Albuquerque, the Rattlesnake Museum is a place for education on these very uh, unappreciated animals of our southwestern deserts. And they have not only rattlesnakes from all across the U.S. and uh, into Mexico, even South America, but they also have a number of native species of other species of snakes and a few lizards uh, to New Mexico as well, including Gila monsters, desert king snakes, and so on. So it's a great place to go down and see the species that can be found within the state, as well as, of course, all the different rattlesnakes found across our continent. Some of the info on the tanks is a little bit outdated, but that's kind of be too expected for any uh, business that's been running for years and years and years and isn't dedicated specifically to taxonomy. So the information there should be taken with a slight grain of salt in terms of what species they're actually showing, but the information about uh, behavior of the snakes, behavior of some of the other animals in the area, as well as all of the different uh, uh, media that they show uh, in TV, in uh, cool license plates that some people have, there's stuff all over the walls. There's a lot of interesting information you can pick up from this place. <laughs> These guys are really cool. Our only native species in the U.S. of the genus Heloderma, the venomous uh, beaded and Gila monsters. Uh, they do actually range into southwestern New Mexico just barely, and so I was hoping to find one, but alas, not this trip. And this is something you, see, you don't see every day either, the rare natural hybrid between the prairie and Mojave rattlesnakes. These do actually exist down in the southwestern corner of New Mexico. They pop up on occasion and did cause some confusion a few days later for me. But uh, what we found was slightly more exciting, at least in my own opinion. Uh, And something else cool that you might also just see in the wild, melanistic western diamondback rattlesnakes. This is a snake that is producing an excess of the pigment melanin, which of course blotches out, darkens the entire pattern, and so makes it hard to identify what species it is. Uh, it's not common in the wild, but it's not particularly detrimental to them either, because they can still fairly well blend in, particularly in dark areas.
We spent a couple of hours enjoying the museum, watching the animals start to get active, and I think the storms that were coming through were actually kind of helping bring these animals out, moving around. They may have felt the drop in pressure, and so we're thinking it's a good time to start moving around, looking for water or food. Uh, this prairie rattlesnake was particularly entertaining, but after we stepped out of the museum, uh, it was pouring rain, so we were unfortunately unable to continue looking around for stuff that night. But the adventures certainly weren't over. This was only the first two days out of a week down in New Mexico. Plenty to come. So uh, keep an eye out for videos that are coming up soon. Certainly also if you'd like to help support the production of educational videos and such like this, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash hcarlton. Or you can donate at uh, coffee.com slash carltoncarnivores if you don't want to sign up for a monthly thing. You can also visit the website and shop, carltoncarnivores.com. There's the actual shop with plants and jewelry and such available for sale there, as well as access to the database and the blog, uh, all the information to contact me. And as always, if you'd like more information, like to see videos and pictures and such, always consider joining and uh, following on social media at Carlton Carnivores on Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores.